We are live. Welcome to Grow Moringa Farms in Plant City, Florida. Really happy you're here today. Happy Saturday. And we are planting Moringa seeds. Look at these beautiful Moringa seeds that we have here. And they are fresh and local. We are in Tampa, Florida, right outside of Tampa in Plant City. We're doing what we love on a beautiful Saturday morning, and I hope you are as well. And I'm really happy that you're here to join me. We're going to go ahead and get started today and just start planting Moringa seeds. One of the ways that you can learn how to plant Moringa seeds and get all the answers to Moringa is literally just going to GrowMoringa.com and downloading this free manual. This will give you all the information to get started in growing Moringa. So we're really happy that you're here. Happy Saturday. We're just getting started. We're going to plant Moringa seeds today. We're going to take this opportunity to... to to showcase what we're doing here at the farm with these biodegradable peat, uh, mo uh, peat moss pellets. And uh, welcome, welcome. We got some visitors here this morning. Welcome all over the world. We have members that are coming in from India and Africa and Ghana um, and we're out uh, Mexico and Puerto Rico. We have members that are coming in from Hawaii. If you'd like to grow and bring it together and get sales and learn how to market and advertise your Moringa, make $100,000 a year growing Moringa trees, planting Moringa seeds, and working in nature, just let us know. I have my number right up there. You can call us, you can text us, and we're available anytime pretty much to go ahead and get back to you and answer all your Moringa questions. We're doing all kinds of things here. We've got this manual, of course. Uh, we, uh, we also have in the members area, we have a book available. It's called Grow Moringa, The Ultimate Guide. You can check out this book. It is in the members area. Just sign up at growmoringa.com and you'll get access to this book. It goes through uh, all the Moringa answers. It's actually a, uh, a complete grower's manual and farmer certification course. And we also have inside the members area, we have a directory of members. We have hundreds and hundreds of members that you can connect with and learn from and see if they have Moringa material and see if they have anything available to purchase from or to trade with and to get cuttings from to get your Moringa operation started. So if you want to get access to the members directory you just got to go to growmoringa.com and get in and find out the hundreds of members all over the world so like if you're in texas and you want to know if someone in texas has moringa near you join the membership if you if you're in california or florida wherever you are in the country or in the world and you want to connect with members uh learn and this like they're visiting like members are visiting each other i'm going to down to fort lauderdale next week I was just in Crystal River a few weeks ago. Uh, we're going to be going to Orlando here in the next few weeks. So I'm also traveling the country and also visiting other Moringa farms and helping them get established. So if you'd like to find more members, just go to GrowMoringa.com. People that are just really growing Moringa. Hopefully we can get through here a little while. It looks like it might even shower and rain a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to go ahead and essentially just kind of teach you how seeds take the Moringa seeds and plant them. What I do is I like to sift the Moringa seeds and get paper. I actually get paper from the Moringa seeds so we can take this, this paper and make paper. Actually, we use an ancient Japanese paper making method to make paper. And uh, it's a great way to just kind of get the paper off the seeds. That way they're just not in the bag. And it, out in nature, uh, what happens is when the seed tumbles around on the dirt, it knows that by the time it's tumbled around so much and it loses those wings that it's time to sprout. And so what we'll do is we'll take the paper off so that way when you get it, they have a higher germination rate and they know that it's time to sprout. We're using uh, excess materials. I have some materials here. I can even tilt this up a little bit so you can see that I have uh, perlite. We also have the peat moss pellets and we have the seeds. And we're just gonna go ahead and plant these out while we're here. If at any time you have any questions, uh, someone's actually asking a question now right, right here, can you eat the seeds? Uh, absolutely, you can most certainly eat the seeds. You just wanna make sure that they're grown healthy 
you don't want to eat them if they've been harvested during the rainy season. You actually want to get seeds that are harvested before the rainy season. That way they don't have fungus or mold or bacteria inside the shell. That way they're super healthy and ready for you to eat. I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of these seeds too. You can eat it with the shell, uh, as well as you can peel off the shell. And on the inside, there's a soft white inner bark, or there's a soft white inner seed here. And one of the things that you can do is just peel that shell off. And that's also an edible part that you can eat. It's very good for you. That's the most nutritious part of it right there. And you can even press it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm pressing that. And there's oil coming out of that. Do you see that on my hand? Look at that. There is oil in there. Lots and lots of oil in there. Look at that. So one of the things that you can do is actually press these seeds in a machine to get oil as well. Mmm. And we actually get oil from our seeds we make moringa seed oil oh it looks like someone's coming down the coming down the chute hopefully we can take care of a few things while they're also coming in and talking maybe they can ask us a few questions as well while we're live we're live we got seeds i really would just want to plant a few seeds maybe they they have some questions while they're while they're here while we're here we have flowers are the seeds better than the greens well the greens are super valuable and super nutritious. Um, the seeds have different properties to them. Of course, they're... plants have like safety mechanisms in, in, their, in the seeds. So um, eating seeds, eating a lot of seeds might, might build up a few things, but you want to eat a little bit of seeds over, over a period of time. So maybe just like one or two seeds. Um, every so often maybe like every day or something I'm just trying to see someone just pulled up here it is after 10 10 a.m. I tried to get started before 10 a.m. so please come on in if you like I'm just live if you like to ask questions you're more than welcome to hang out I'm just gonna go live for like 30 minutes you're more than welcome to sit here if you'd like yeah so uh, we got a few guests and buenos dias buenos dias the camera's this way on me okay Okay, cool. We got a little crowd here. They're going to go ahead and probably ask us a few questions while we're here. It's pretty cool. We got people coming in. We're open every day between 10 and 2. And you can, um, but more than, the better, the better time to visit me is actually on Saturdays. This is when I go live. This is when we have guests coming in. So we'll just probably have them pull up a chair and have a seat here. And uh, we'll just get started. Come on in. I'm just planting seeds. I'm live on YouTube and Facebook right now. Welcome. You can ask me questions and I can go ahead and answer it while everybody else is also getting the deal. <laughs> Pull up a chair if you'd like. If you don't mind, just hang out with me for a few minutes and uh, we'll just be planting seeds. I'm going to be teaching people how to plant seeds as well so that way we can talk. Okay. So we plant them in this biodegradable pots right here like this. You can see here. And this is filled with peat moss. But one of the problems that we had was that uh, it was becoming a little acidic and a little anaerobic. So we decided to go ahead and add a little perlite to this mix. And this is what you're going to be doing if you have these uh, biodegradable pots as one of our members. And you have these and you want to fulfill orders with us. One of the best ways to make your trees more healthy if you're planting in the biodegradable pots is to go ahead and just... I have this little chopstick here. We're just making a little bit of room in there. We're just kind of stirring it up. Be careful not to break the outer seal of this uh, corn biodegradable shell that these are put in. And then I just dump perlite in there. And what perlite does is it adds aeration. It adds a little bit of um, space for the seeds to grow so that way they don't get um, kind of like anaerobic, bogged down with just suffocated. So that way they don't get suffocated. Um, have you heard of perlite before? No? Yeah, that's, that comes with all the plants at the nurseries. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. But what's crazy is that when when these come, they don't have any perlite in them. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take this extra step and add perlite to this. So that way they come out a little bit more healthy. And uh, we have the seed. And we're going to go ahead and just plant the seed right inside there. And we're just going to probably try to stick it as far down as we can. 
and then that's it and we'll just kind of let that go just like that and this is probably the best way to get your moringa seeds to sprout super fast and healthy someone said that they've tried this but the germination rate isn't so well uh, it could be the time of year it also depends on the time of year we're starting to plant these you know it's the end of february but um you know, hopefully we've gone through most of the frost. We might have a few more frosts. We'll see. Usually by the end of March or so is like the last time that there is a frost or cold weather. But we need to get started. We've got hundreds of orders that are coming in for trees. And so we have a little bit already planted like we did a couple of days ago. So we've already planted out a few trays just with the perlite inside. I normally get the lives going earlier, so I'm sorry that I'm just kind of going live for a little bit. You guys are cool. It's going this way, so, you so you're not on camera or anything. We're good. Cool. And please, I would like it if you ask me a lot of questions while, while, while you're here. Maybe for the next maybe 15, 20 minutes, if, that, if that's okay, yes, if you don't mind. Fine. Okay, cool. Yes. And if you want to take a walk and go around, totally fine. You know, I'm just here doing my thing. Um, what, what, what would you like to get today? So, first question, now that you're mentioning the frost. So, what is the temperature? I see that you have the greenhouse, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But what is the ideal temperature, especially when they're so small? Now that we have like... Good question. The winter is coming, 30 degree weather, blah, blah, blah. So right. Well, Moringa is a tropical tree. Uh, sprouting wise, they like to be over 60 degrees. 70 degrees is more ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always sprout like on this, like on the, in this tray, like with a heating pad, you can always put a heating pad down. Uh, if say like it gets really, really cold. But what I do is I close the sides of the walls of this okay. and also put a heater inside. I'll close the doors so that way the heat doesn't get in. But I do have a heater in there. A fan is in there to help circulate the air. Okay. And um, so 70 degrees, yeah. they, they're tropical, you know, so they like it really warm. Okay. Uh, you want to keep the trees uh, the seedlings in a warm environment. So that's why I've just kind of waited. You know, November was our first kind of drop in temperature. Right. And since then, our whole nursery has been, it died back, everything died back to the ground, but they're still alive in the pots. That's what's so crazy. I'll take you for a little tour and show you. It might not look like much, but underneath the soil there, they have real big root tubers inside those pots. Okay. So like for so part of the year here, you might notice that you might not see much. You know, even around here, I cut everything back. You'll notice everything is just sticks. So I did that to just kind of put the trees in a dormant state. So that way they could spend the next few months just kind of building the root system. Okay. Yeah. When did you guys hear about Moringa? Um, my mom watches your YouTube videos. Oh, wonderful. So she might even be watching here. Hey, we got a few people on. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Um, and then also, of course, the YouTube channel. I try to go live every Saturday morning for the public, and then I go live every day in my members area. So it's a good way for me to connect with everybody that comes in, and we're just, they're just asking questions. I'm trying to help people um, make a living, you know, right. like this, like I am. And just helping people realize you gotta plant, you know, seeds every day. And I've been planting seeds every day for seven years. Oh, wow. So that way I have a stock, and people can come in, and they can buy it. So that way I can make a living from this constant cycle. Some, sometimes if I don't sell everything that I have here, I can pot it up. And then if someone doesn't buy that, I can pot that up again. And it gets increases in value. It, it never like decreases in value. The trees just keep getting bigger. I can keep charging more. And it's a way to consistently uh, make investment. It's like a bank. Like every time I plant a seed, it's like a, it's like a bank. It's an, it's an investment opportunity, so. Um, what are your plans? You guys live pretty close by. You want to um, potentially grow Moringa for yourselves first? Uh, we kind of want to see what it is. And the idea is to plant um, at least an acre awesome. of Moringa. So the question, the next question would have been, like, how many trees do you think you can plant in at one acre? I know exactly how many. Okay. So when you're planting it in an orchard style kind of like the farm that's out there that's more of like and i'll take you for a little tour out okay. there that's more of like four to five hundred trees okay 
and you would do that about 10 to 15 apart. Everybody's getting some really good info here. This is good. <laughs> so you would do that about every 10 to 15 feet. You can grow a tree like that in an orchard, just kind of like grid it out and, um, and just, uh, I have them on mounds as a way to plant them here in this area. We plant them on mounds because in the summertime it gets really, really wet and raining. And then uh, you don't want it to flood. Moringa trees like water, they are drought resistant, but they need to have good drainage. They don't okay. like wet feet. So you'll notice everything is like on mounds. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, good so then the next level of planting style is called a fedge. And that's more of like three to five feet apart. What's the difference? Uh, it's more tight, a little bit more tight in. The trees don't get as big. So orchard is full size. They're 10 to 15 feet apart, like from me to you. And then they get a huge crown on them and they grow lots of drumsticks, which is the fruit and the vegetable that comes off the tree, which is where the seeds, so seeds are in. Do you, Could you grab me one it, actually in that bin right there? That's on top of that bar barrel. Would you be willing to grab me one of those drumsticks? Is it better to have it closer or orchard? Everything is for a purpose. I wouldn't say better or worse. I would say it depends on what you're trying to do. Make a living would be? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the third one too. I want to just show, sorry about the steps there. I just grabbed these cinder blocks. Um, hopefully everybody's listening too. We've, we've got a, quite a few people here. Wonderful. People are really, really like loving loving what's going on right now that you guys are here and they're, they're getting some really good value too. So this is the drumstick that comes off the tree. So when you grow it 10 to 15 feet apart, you're able to get a full tree with thousands of these on the tree. This is where the seeds come out of. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. So that's where the seeds are. Now this one was uh, a little bit of maybe an immature tree or maybe it stayed too wet. Um, and maybe the tree was young. I can't remember exactly, exactly when, uh, when we harvested these. We might not have, actually, these might not even be dry completely yet. They might even still be wet. But they, there's about 20 to 30 seeds inside each drumstick. One tree can produce thousands of drumsticks. Okay. Usually, they can produce a drumstick in the first year. Oh, wow. So in one year, you could have a drumstick with a seed. But I try to pop flowers off so the flowers will go to seed. So we have flowers here, I'll show everybody too. Mm -hmm. So these are the Moringa flowers. These come off the trees first. When, when the tree flowers, those get pollinated and then those turn into this. So when the flower is pollinated, it then turns into a little bit of a, first it's stringy and green, which you can eat and chop. It's very good in soup. And these are also very good to eat as well, which is why we have them packaged. They're very good in teas. So you can grab these on our website as well. We have lots of Moringa flowers fresh. We just harvested and dried them. The reason why I harvest them is because off of small trees, I may not want to get drumsticks right away. I may want the tree to grow a root system before growing fruit. She's immature. She may not be ready. The, the seeds will come out more pale like this versus dark like this. And they may not be fully mature and dark. So that's why I say this could have been off of like a very young tree. Okay. Could have been just time of year. I may have even harvested a little bit too early, but I was focused on the greens. So the different size of the tree as you want to grow it, it will depend on what purpose for the tree you have. Like if you right. want to harvest just the leaves, for example, you don't need the tree to grow 15 exactly. feet or whatever. But Which if you want to get what do you call this drumstick the drumsticks. drumsticks if you want to grow the drumsticks for oils and all that yes. then you want them to be exactly okay so we have the oil here too so like i press the seeds i press hundreds of thousands of seeds and get this wonderful seed oil here and uh, we have a machine that presses the seeds we just before we press the seeds even we take the paper that's on the wings here you see how the these these seeds have like lots of paper on the wings yes yeah I'll take this and I make paper with it. I actually make paper. Like paper to like write on paper? Paper, paper. This paper? Yeah. Well, what, what? I do is I, I, make, um, I make drawing paper so that way I can paint on it. I'm a painter. Oh, oh wow. So I make canvas with it. Wow. Yeah. So everything, you can use everything. Yeah, everything. 
And then so like when I press the seeds in the machine, what comes out of the machine is the crushed seed and the oil. The crushed seed is also fertilizer. And that's what we call the biostimulant seed cake. This is good for stimulating the soil. This is over 60% crude protein, vitamins, minerals, everything that's in the shell of this seed here. Essentially, this is thousands and thousands of seeds crushed that comes out of the machine when I make the oil. Okay. So there's no byproduct nice. that is not useful. Everything is useful. That's why I'm able to make $100,000 a year off of growing Moringa because I use everything. everything. everything right. I'm selling everything back. I'm using it in my soil. And that's how I want to teach people how they can also do the same thing. Okay. Uh -huh. So I was explaining the orchard, you get the drumstick. The next size is the fedge, which is the food hedge, which is something like a border that you would use for maybe privacy. It's not really full privacy because you would be harvesting it. It's mostly just for having tight trees. You're getting more greens. So like when someone comes to me, they say, how fast can I make money? Well, if you get people to sign up to my membership, you could make $125 every person. So, cause I give, I give people 50% of the sale. So when someone comes to my membership, it's 250 for the year. I'll give someone 125 for that. that. That's how you can make money right away in the Moringa industry. Cause I'm building a team of people that are coming in and learning with me every day. And also you can become a teacher and an educator inside the members area. We have a huge uh, platform where people are coming in. We already have several hundred people in there talking, sharing, posting. I have a thousand unlisted YouTube videos in there. And I also go live every day in that members area. Eventually I want more members that are educated, that have learned through the year with me, two years with me to go live on behalf of the collective to also teach and you can get paid for also teaching others in the collective as well so become an educator okay yeah so the next step from hedge or fedge i call it a fedge because it's a food hedge fedge. <laughs> okay yeah so the fedge is about three to five feet apart and that's like a border mm -hmm. right so if you have an acre you've already got 500 trees then in the in just the border you can get another 500 trees so 500 trees spread out in an orchard style 500 trees just around the border so now you're at a thousand trees nice. oh, okay wow. that's a full acre that's how you're going to start generating revenue quick because the fedge is going to start generating lots of greens and cuttings for you within the first year the orchard is going to produce more so drumsticks and things within the second and third year right but how can you make money within 30 days from the trees and that's by planting it like you would a lettuce or a kale and what i call the intensive method it's intense which means all you do is you drop your seeds in a raised bed like that over there do you see my raised beds right there yes that's where i'm going to be dropping all of my moringa seeds so I'm dropping all my Moringa seeds in six inch piece parts, six inches apart. Essentially, I'm gonna be planting the trees this far apart. Okay. In the, in the, in the raised bed. They're gonna be that tight. Oh. And it's just gonna make a grass of greens. It's just gonna make a whole thing of greens. So within 30 days after sprouting, because these usually sprout within two weeks, mm -hmm. and then within two weeks after that, you've got a tree, a small little tree with greens on it. I've already eaten all mine and I've already sold all mine. These are more of the tropicals that I have. I'm starting to get this side going because of the springtime. I was able to keep these babies all, all, all winter long, but I sold all of my moringas because we're selling thousands and thousands of trees because of what, what I'm doing right here. Yeah. My, mom's ha my mom has about 30 moringa trees about that tall right now. Awesome. So. And you're close by. We are in the Palm Bay area. Per oh, really? Came yes. all the way from Palm Bay? Is yes. that on the other side? On the yeah. other side. You yes. gotta be kidding me. <laughs> no, awesome. we're not. You look familiar. I'm sorry, I keep looking at you like I've seen you before. I okay. used to work over in this area yeah. years ago. Okay. Where? Um, I, I do um, CNA work. Oh, okay. I go into people's homes and take care of them. Oh, wonderful. Well, you just look familiar. Maybe oh. just one of the members also looks just like you. Oh, uh, that's possible. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're trying to 
to see because we're going to be moving to the Willingstone, Mer Morrison area. Okay. Up by the Ocala area. Oh, wonderful. So we wanted to uh, dedicate about one acre just to plant Great. the Moringa trees. Great. What I would do is if you're in that area, I would... It gets a lot colder. It gets a little colder. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, it, it even gets cold here. I have a, a whole one acre field over there. That's that's one acre essentially. It's a sliver mm -hmm. and it goes down the length of the property. This is about one and a half and then I have a one, a one acre uh, farm plot. Okay. It's about a hundred feet from the pathway to the fence. What I'm going to do is, is uh, and I can show you even on the paper. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, she, she brought a pad of paper here too. <laughs> She's taking notes. Everybody here is taking notes. So if I have my, my acreage here, this is two and a half acres. I'm an architect by trade, so I nice. do lots of napkin drawings. That's how I make my moolah. But essentially, the, the property is kind of split like this with the pathway, and we're standing pretty much right here okay. in the greenhouse, right? Okay. And this is the farm, but this is about an acre sliver. What I would do, especially where you are and what I'm doing, is I'm making greenhouses like this. I'm just going to be making a bunch of greenhouses that go all the way down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm going to have my big trees, my orchard style trees in the ground. So I'm going to have about two to 300 trees within here. And I'll have about two rows inside each one. And they'll be staggered about 10 to 15 feet apart. And I'll Inside show you what I mean. Inside the greenhouse. In the okay. big, big greenhouse. Okay. Not the baby greenhouse. Right. This is for the babies. This will be something that'll be more so like 10 to 15 feet tall. And potentially I could take the plastic off in the summer. But what happens in the summer, even here and even in Ocala, is that it rains a lot. It'll rain for like 30 days straight. Yeah. That'll yellow out the leaves unless you have like a really good drainage system and you have uh. them on, you know, like ditches and everything and keeps the water away but mm -hmm. the leaves will yellow out because there's so much rain so what i'm doing is i'm noticing to extend my season even here in florida is to at least start with one big greenhouse right and then potentially go down down the way mm -hmm. and it's tall it's like 10 15 feet tall maybe even you know 15 feet at the center right um, and the trees will grow up big inside there, but I'm going to keep them trimmed so that way they'll produce drumsticks inside there. The greens will stay nice and green. Mm -hmm. And then in the wintertime, it'll still be producing all winter long okay. inside there. So they will forever live in a greenhouse? Yeah, and okay. the greenhouse is, is very big. It's open. Right. It's right. mostly just a covered space that allows the trees to keep the all the water off in the summer it's a lot of water and that get burnt by the sun not so much the sun but it's mostly one the water and two burnt by the freeze because oh, okay. they'll get freezer so burn the water see, in the summer yeah the freeze freeze in the winter. yeah see the okay. bananas okay. see how the bananas got oh, yes. got burnt yeah so in that order you don't have to stop harvesting so that way you don't have to stop harvesting that way you can keep harvesting so I'll show you that, and I'm going to be going and doing okay. that around around there. And um, we have members that are coming in, and as a way for you to also join us and, and help supply other members in, in Ocala and just customers, because we, we have lots of customers coming in from Ocala right now, and Brooksville, Spring Hill, that whole area, there's a lot of people that are growing in that area. What you can do is, is have a little greenhouse to get started. I built this just from materials, for a couple hundred dollars. This was like a four to $500 greenhouse that I put together. Uh, very simple, it's got the sides there that roll up and close. They just yeah. kind of roll up there. I have it, oh, yeah. I have it secured. PVC pipe. And just PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually electrical conduit, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just locked in and into the frame yep, on the yep. bottom. Yep. But um, what you can do is do what I'm doing here and, and our members are fulfilling orders for us. So as a way to keep up with all the orders that I get is I'm giving the members orders. So if they come into the website and you're doing this and, and the order comes in and it's in Ocala, I'm gonna give, give you the order. Okay, you know? and so in that case, um, 
so you're doing the sale do the members get part of that sale or how they get is that? the majority of the sale okay. so as a way for me to stay in business and give you all the money i would just keep 15 percent of the sale okay so okay. for instance if we sell 15 of these little pots for 50 dollars that's our kind of rate that we're at right now we, it might go up it, it might go down depending but to be fair for everybody, we have it at $50 right now for 15 trees, right? So just put 15 trees in a box and ship it. Or potentially the order comes in so close to you mm -hmm. that you can just drop it off right. and you can keep that shipping money, right? Mm -hmm. So we have hundreds of orders coming in all over the country right now. They're, they're coming in right now. It's wow. because we're live, we're doing this. I got my phone number on there. I have someone answering the phones right now. I can see her commenting and oh. saying, because people are asking, I have someone working in Las Vegas right now that is helping us answer calls, the texts, get back to people, let people know what's going on here um, at the farm. So like the $50 for the 15 trees mm -hmm. comes into the website, growmoringa.com. Say the order is in Ocala we find that the, the buyer is in Ocala. And you're in Ocala and you have 15 trees and they look really great and they're ready to go. I'm just, what if they use a coupon? I have a coupon code on there, so I account for the coupon code. Um, and so at the end of it all, I think after taxes and coupon, it gets down to like 35 bucks. And then if you can deliver it, you get to keep essentially the 35 bucks. But if we have to print a shipping label, it's going to be maybe right. seven bucks. So you might end up keeping like 28 at the end of the day. So you get about $2 a tree. Okay. And that's even a dollar more than what is, is, is at like a wholesale nursery because they're selling them for like a dollar. So if you have, if you go to a wholesale nursery, you might be able to buy hundreds of these for a dollar. Um, but you're also able to make $2 off of each one of these. So I, I, I want to be able to pay people a good price. That's why I have the, um, the trees really high. Some people are like, why are your prices so high? It's because we, we have members and we want to take care of everybody and everybody is in the USA. Our labor is a lot higher than other countries, which is one of the reasons why that, the Moringa market doesn't even really exist here in the USA because um, labor is so expensive. Mm -hmm. So is the market... How saturated is the market for saturated for the Moringa? Right? No, no, that we're in the exact opposite situation. There's no saturation at all because nobody is able to grow it in the USA because of the cost of labor. Nobody's doing what we're doing in the USA. So we have Everyone, high demand. so we have such a high demand. Okay. We're in the exact opposite situation right now. So, so everything that we have right now probably comes from other countries, is what you're saying. It's being 100 percent of everything really? that you've ever tried moringa is from another country. Oh, wow. So all, all of your members on Facebook are, are not here? They're here. They're Everybody the wants to learn how to do it here oh. because the demand is so high for moringa now. Everybody's like, I want USA moringa. Where do I get it? I'm the only one that's at that level. Oh, wow. I've been doing it for seven years, but everybody else that's doing it has essentially come through me. I mean, I'm not the first and only one to do it here in the, in the States. I, I definitely got a lot of my knowledge from other growers and things like that. Right. But at the level that I'm doing it at now, this scale, at this scale, right? okay. yeah, because okay. I've been making a living off of Moringa alone for seven years. I got wow. the two and a half acre property now. I mean, I was homeless just two years ago getting this business started. I lived out of my store. I should say I was houseless. I had a store. <laughs> I was living in my store. Okay. But it was, it was no situation to really be in, but it was because I was determined to get this business going. And I put every dollar back into the business. And I was able to invest in this two and a half acre property here doing a rent to own two years ago. Mm -hmm. It put me in the position to be able to get this place. You know, getting a business started is lots of sacrifice. Oh, yes, yeah, for sure. Nice. So, so I want to clarify that and why it's not here as much okay. as say in other countries, because it's not native to the USA. Right. It's from India and Africa. Mm -hmm. And also it's very sensitive to the cold. I mean, we just had a frost two weeks ago mm -hmm. here in Florida. I was in Key West for my birthday and it was 40, 50 degrees. So these are tropical trees. 
And everyone's wondering why they can't get it in the USA is because everywhere else in the, in the world can grow it. Except right. for, say, all year, the cost of having to go through a frost and have everything dried back and cut back, it's not affordable for farmers to do it in the USA. So every, and the labor, like I said, is 10 times as much here right. as it is in any other country. So it's not feasible yet yes, to can. do so it here. So um, speaking of labor, like for the harvest, so say, let's say that we have the one acre all planted, right? We have 1,000 Moringa trees going. On I haven't even gotten acre. to the intensive be beds yet. <laughs> what is that? So <laughs> that's where you grow it six inches apart, okay. right? So in between each one of those trees, that's the orchard. And I can draw this out for you, too. Oh, here we go. I can use that same one, yeah. That's my buddy, Ben. So I'll do a zoom in of your 10, 10 feet apart, right? This, this uh -huh. is a tree, and this is a tree. In between there, you have a raised bed. With the trees in it. With 100 trees inside that oh. raised bed. Inside a greenhouse. Yes. Well... I see what you're saying. Because I said here, I have the orchard inside the greenhouse. Yes, it could, but you could also have it growing. If you're gonna have it growing outside, outside like this. Yes. You could have it, because like intensive in the summer is fine. You'll have 100 to 150 trees inside that kind of four this by eight. for winter time. For winter time. So but okay. also like, for someone that's growing it in Georgia or North Carolina or in Texas or in California, where it does get kind of cold, uh, we have a lot of people that want to grow this in the summertime, intensively. Oh, they may okay. not be growing it for orchard because they don't have a greenhouse, it gets too cold. Right. But every summer, they can prepare their beds just like they do lettuce and kale and beans and soybeans, you know? Uh -huh. So they can grow moringa just like they grow mm -hmm. carrots. Like a vegetable. Like a vegetable. Mm -hmm. And it's very close seasonal. together. Right. Right. So when you do this, combined with the border, so we've got 100 on the border, or sorry, we've got 500 on the border. We've got 500 <laughs> in the orchard. You've got 20,000 in the raised beds on one acre. Oh my That's a lot. <laughs> I lost count. It's a lot. How are we going to harvest that? That was my question. Like, how, 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 yeah, how, yeah. how do you... Do they have machines? Yes. Do they have yeah, machines Absolutely. for the harvesting? And you know that guy off that one movie, what was that, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Yes. <laughs> You're going to do it like that, looking for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. So you could get 20,000 trees just in raised beds on one acre. So you'll have about 100 raised beds. Okay. So what do you use those little trees for? For greens microgreens. What does that mean? So you would take those greens and you would get tea ah. and loose leaf and then make powder with just those greens. And those greens are a premium because they are micro and they're fresh. Right. How is it manageable for on a small scale like for a person? For <laughs> one person? Like just do one raised bed. Just build one little greenhouse. Just plant a couple of trees in your backyard. That's how I got started. I got started by knocking on people's doors and asking if I could plant a tree in their backyard. They're like, what, for what? <laughs> I'm like, it's food. Plus I'm trying to live. And they said, well, okay. What do I get out of it? Well, you get a beautiful tree. You can come in your backyard and you can make greens and your omelets every day if you'd like you have fresh greens you can eat it it helps with blood sugar blood pressure it's a complete protein vitamins and minerals oh. so let's say for example I, I know that's not a moringa tree but let's say for example that's a moringa tree yeah right so if you grab that leaf right there mm -hmm. you can use it like we use spinach to make omelets correct okay and that's the one of the highest values i'll say that the tree was actually developed this is a byproduct similar to the paper mm -hmm. Indians and Africans originally started growing it for this. The, the, the variety of tree that we're growing here is called Moringa oleifera. There are 13 varieties of Moringa. Okay. 
the Olifera has high oil content. Oleifera, Olifera. Ole is oil, Ifera is producing, oil producing. And so this seed and this tree is mostly valuable for the oil. So if you can get a big enough greenhouse to get at least 20 trees inside, if you can get like a hundred foot long greenhouse, nice and big, and you can put 20 trees inside, you could get tens of thousands of drumsticks a year that will then in turn produce seeds that you could then make oil out of, which is the most valuable part of the tree. Okay. That everybody is really, really wanting. Mm. But a byproduct of having trees is getting this super valuable green that everybody also loves because of its nutritional value. So this has lots of vitamins and minerals. We just have loose leaf here. We also have the seeds. Oops. Hey, oh, careful. Oh, Aw, poor baby. Uh, you'll have to excuse her. She is deaf and slightly blind. She just showed up to the farm like two weeks ago. Yeah. Sorry, they just stepped on Harmony. It's okay. Harmony's okay. We call her Harmony because Har is watcher and Moni is money. So she's watching the money. And get seeds. Wonderful. We got lots of lots of lots of excited people here on YouTube as well as Facebook just getting this good knowledge that we've got. And my buddy Ben's here. He's actually um, really helpful on the property. He's permaculture certified. Helps us to design the space the spaces here. And I have another question. Do sure. To install artificial lights inside the greenhouses. You know, I don't think so. You don't have to, but you could. You could to get a little bit more green, especially in the winter time when there's not as much sun, like when it looks like this yeah, a lot. They, like the sun, they right? love it. Yeah, they love the lot of sun. Um, so type of soil, like Florida is very, very sandy. Yes, right? they love the sandy soil. Really? really? Yep, that's why they do so well here. They don't like clay. They don't like rock too much. They like sandy wow, soil. They don't have to import dirt. <laughs> You do have to kind of bring in a little bit of things. You know, I, you can see I have a couple piles here. The, the, the sandy pile is the compost and the sand. The, uh, the peat moss is there in that brownish pile. Mm -hmm. And I mix those together to kind of put in my raised beds and also in holes in the ground because the peat moss helps to uh, hold moisture, mm -hmm. but the sand uh, helps to drain right. water, right? And the sand is more alkaline and the peat is more acidic. So it kind of like balances it out a little bit. Okay. The trees like the pH to be a little bit more alkaline. So do you, you don't have to worry about fertilizing them? And... Well, you know what's cool is that uh, Moringa itself is a fertilizer. Okay. So you can use Moringa itself. So I have a liquid that I make from leaves, Moringa leaves. It, we call that liquid biostimulant. And I have that here too. And that helps to get these started, you know, so you can use Moringa as a fertilizer. Okay. She's getting used to people. She's, she just, like I said, she just showed up here at the farm and she was really uh, malnourished and really thin. I've been feeding her every day. Um, and I, and we named her Harmony. She's really sweet. She's really sweet cat, but I can't believe that she's deaf. She's completely deaf, I think. And she's partially blind. So I'm not sure what happened. She, I don't know where she's from, but she's ours now. So if you just keep the intensive um, beds, right? Yes. You harvest that for greens, and then it automatically starts renewing itself. That's or right. Or you have to cut it. That's or... right. So every 30 days, 45 days or so, you'll want to go ahead and just uh, harvest the greens, and then it'll regrow. So okay. one of the tricks to planting planting is that when you when you trim it back like what we've done here with all these sticks you can see that everything's pretty much trimmed back it flushes back out with more branches right. it's like uh, trimming the tips of your hair mm -hmm. it makes your hair more thick and more full you know so same thing with the branches those are like the hairs you know so when you trim the tips and even like uh 
I'm not sure if I have even one above the ground or one that sprouted because we have people coming in just taking all the ones that are sprouted. But uh, what you can do is you can trim that leaf back and I'll show you, I can even show you here. So like if you have a stem that's coming off the tree and you have the first two leaves that come up off of it and it keeps growing, you can cut it here and it'll re-sprout new stems. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you cut it here, it'll, it'll regrow new stems down here. Okay. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Is there an optimal time for harvesting? Like the be better yeah. time of the year that yes. you do it? Uh, when they're green, when it's warm and hot. Hey, Ben, welcome. Hi. We're live and also we have some, some friends that came by. Yeah, so we're just answering questions. Um, so best time to harvest is when they're green, of course. They will yellow out during the winter, winter time when the temperatures drop and when, they, when the rain stop, uh, they will yellow out a little bit. So you'll wanna get it during those peak heat season, the peak heat season. I don't even know if I should use this one. This one's kind of already falling apart. This is actually cool. This is made from uh, corn. It's biodegradable, like a little shell. And uh, it's cool because the roots will then grow out of this and you can actually just stick these pots in the ground or in a bigger pot and it'll just regrow out of that. Wow. I really like them. Where did you get those? I just got them online. I have a link on my, uh, on my website. I have a supplies list okay. that you can actually purchase, purchase these. Um, okay. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, you guys? I'm a, I'm happy to answer all of them that you have, like where to go, because you were like you were kind of like, when do you harvest? You know, when they're green. You know, when they're green is good. Um, you want to get it, um, like in the summertime, they're really, really like just flushing out with greens. Okay. And then what you would do is you would prepare the tree before winter time. You would trim it back, and it might go a little bit more. You can get more of the greens. And then if there's a frost or anything, um, you could cover it. You can even just get it cut back and, and, and the, the wood might get damaged, but it'll regrow and I'll show you what I mean out in the field. Okay. Um, they just regrow. If anything gets damaged like above the ground and people are like, oh no, my tree died. It's not like it died. It's more like the root system it's is dormant. intact and the, and the, and the um, the branches and the sticks and the stems mostly got damaged. So the bark on the tree is very thin. It's mm -hmm. a tropical tree. And, it, and the reason why tropical trees have thin bark is so that way they can breathe, you know, in that heat with the humidity, right? Mm -hmm. But what that does is it leaves them susceptible to being able to freeze very easily because they don't even really have a bark, a thick bark to protect the inner water. So the water actually explodes in the stems. So if it freezes and the water gets frozen in the bark, inside the stem, and it explodes, it'll blacken out, it'll die out, and you just cut that off, and then it regrows more, more branches for you mm -hmm. and more stems for you in the summertime. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you, let's say that we join the co-op, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how is the process, like you have already the market, mm -hmm. and then we just, send you let's say we go ahead and harvest the seeds or the leaves or whatever we send them to you no or i don't want them okay because i want them to go to the customer okay i already have mine i have so much i i, I have so many orders i i can't even keep up with the orders but i have orders all over the country why not give it to the people that are close by because okay. everybody that's coming to us wants it local right so like if they're in louisiana or they're in las vegas or they're in texas they really want it to be from Las Vegas. They want it to be from California. Fresh product. Fresh and local. So what we're, what we're doing is when an order comes into the website, you're acting as a vendor. Mm -hmm. You're acting as a marketplace. You know, we're the marketplace, but you're the, you're the, you're the vendor. You're the one with the table. Okay. It's, a, it's like a farmer's market, mm -hmm. but you're the farmer in Ocala that is a supplier, but it doesn't necessarily need to come to me to then go back to a, a buyer. Okay. It can actually go directly to the buyer. Mm -hmm. Got it. But so in that case, if that's the, if that's going to happen, we just need to make sure that you're at a high level of understanding of the whole entire right. operation right. and the process. Right. 
because there could be little things that go wrong. You, there could be bugs inside packages. You know, if you want to use your label, say you have a company that you, you started, it's under your LLC, the labels could be yours or they could be ours, depending on what you need. So if you need to use our labels, because you're a certified member, we'll allow you to use the labels. In that case, you would have the labels, you would have the packaging equipment, your greens and your material be ready, you would get it ready to go. An order comes in and I notify you of the order and you just ship it out or deliver it and we send you the payment. So okay. we gotta do all the processing. Right, so the if you want, If you want, but you don't have to. We have growers all over the country that don't do anything because there are people in the collective that don't have land or don't have anything. So there's people that don't have anything and there's people that have land. The people that don't have anything and they have their time and their labor and their sweat, they come on to properties where people can't do anything. Maybe they're elderly or they're not physically able to, or they don't have the time. And or, they work it and they process it. And they work it and process it for them. Okay. So we have to learn how to process. So, yeah, well, let's say for example, we want to do the oil, mm -hmm. right? Then we will have to get the machine or whatever to press it and get the oil. Yeah. Right? And okay. you know what we're working towards? What? Being able to have shared spaces. Okay. So being able to rent maybe a small storage unit or a warehouse for a couple hundred dollars a month in Ocala, where all the members in Ocala can come to and they share one oil machine. So you have a lot of people in Ocala? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Nice. Several businesses already popping up um, from the training that I've been doing. I started the training in June. Mm -hmm. And we have about 300 people or so now oh, wow. that are in the collective. Um, and we probably have another 300 people that are probably about to join here very soon. They're just waiting for the cold to end. And they just want to get to a point where they can sprout the seeds and then they can pick up orders with us. Okay. Um, my next question, because we're going to be in that Ocala area, I know that the Moringa is used as um, supplement for horse feed, cow feed, and all that. Yep. How is that? Amazing. So some of the biggest businesses in the world are seed and fertilizer companies and also animal feed companies. They're the biggest companies in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hugest markets that we can tap into together is by feeding our animals with a clean, fresh protein that has vitamins and minerals. So that way we can eat the animals that have that good stuff, not eat the animals that are eating corn when they're not supposed to be eating GMO corn. Right. You know, because that stuff's not healthy for them to eat. But as a way to help supplement animal food and grains and things like that is to by putting fresh Moringa greens right in their piles of food or the dried powder right in their food because it also has a lot of fiber in it too which helps them go to the bathroom same with people everything that we're saying that is good for people is just as good for the animals and so they need to be eating it just as much as we do so is there a big market for that right now so around the world moringa has grown to over a 10 billion dollar a year industry meaning all over the world moringa and this is just the food side, like for humans, mm -hmm. is at $10 billion. I mean, there's $10 billion worth of Moringa being sold in the world. Just in the USA, it was $500 million last year. So $500 million are on the table for us to grab because there's $500 million worth of Moringa being sold by other companies. And it went from $1 billion, like in 2010 around the world to now 10 billion in 12 years. Wow. It's going to continue to increase, obviously. It's going to 20 billion by 2025, essentially. So it's doubling the market for the demand for Moringa because more people are becoming aware of it, especially in the USA. Um, so let's say that we're on the co-op, right? We're in the Kala area. We go ahead and start promoting the Moringa to all the horse farms because you know that's horse con yep. country right yep. there. Great. So we should be able to say, come to you and say, hey, we got 10 orders of whatever it you is. You can have your own order orders. Whatever. Okay. You can have your own orders too. If you are your own company, we are just a tool. Okay. One of the tools to help you get sales. We're not the only thing that you rely on. 
we're just helping you get started. We're helping teach mostly, educate you. Mm -hmm. And then if you start going out to those companies, you have your own price rate. You have your own thing that you do and you charge. You can charge them whatever you want. But we've helped you get there. And that's my main goal okay. is to really just help you get to that and point. And if we say, like, okay, they say, oh, we need 150 pound bags of whatever. And we only have 50. We come to you and say, wait, we need 50 more. Yeah. Then within the collective, that's we can right. get the other. Okay. We have good. other members. You can help other members in that way by helping them get sales. Right. Okay. We okay. work with each other because I'm helping you get sales. I have too many sales right now. I have too many orders coming in. I'm over 50 orders behind right now. I bet you some of them are, are, are texting me right now like, hey, where's my order? Because I'm here live promoting and doing things as well because I have to keep up with it. But also I have workers that come in during the week and they help to fulfill orders. It's also just Saturday, you know, and they're not here right now. They've been here all week fulfilling orders, trying to get as many orders out as we can every single day. But my goal is to lighten the load of orders that, that we're fulfilling at one location and mm -hmm. fulfill orders on hundreds of locations together as a team. Because mm -hmm. the orders are starting to come in for 100 kilos a month. I've got, some, I've got people calling me for 100 kilos a month oh, wow. of powder for their smoothies or for their capsules or for their horses. And I need to call you and say, hey, I'm gonna send you this 100 kilo a month contract. But as a way, to keep up with the advertising and to pay the company as well and our workers, we're just gonna collect 15% of that sale right. Mm -hmm. right. as a commission, as our own commission. Right. So which one is it that you use for like smoothies? Smoothies, uh, that's the, um, the green loose leaf here. The green, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we just powder this. Yeah. And you can make capsules. Yes. Take the I'd rather have it in my smoothie. Smoothie's great. <laughs> I took three capsules this morning uh, with some avocado and and uh, just had some fat. I, I just chugged a little bit of oil, of the Moringa oil. So I have my oil and my fat and my protein in the morning. Huh? It helps me get going. Plus I drink some yes. mineral water. It has vitamins and minerals in it. Awesome. Yeah, so maybe we can go ahead and go for a tour. We've been at live here almost an hour. Essentially, I'm just trying to go live for about an hour, just give people information. Everybody's in here. We've got members in here in the Facebook group, and we have about 30, 40 people here in the YouTube. It's great. It's a Saturday morning. You got all the questions. Yes, I did. I have all the answers, and that's what I tell people. I have all the answers. I'll do a quick little promo real quick to, to end this up because I have a book available in the members area that you can actually grab as a member. And I'll just shout it out real quick so people know where to grab it. So in the members area, you can get the book here. This is the Grow Moringa Ultimate Guide. I'm writing this book. You'll have access to it. Chapter one is done. I'll have chapter two by the end of the, end of the month. And then it's 10 chapters. It's like 500 pages. It's a full grower's manual and certification course. Essentially, I'm grabbing the material from these lives, from my videos, putting it here in the book for you so that way you can have access to it anytime in the members area. Before getting into the members area, you can also download this free book here. This is the free manual that you can grab. It's available. If you just go to growmoringa.com, download the free manual. It'll tell you about how you can make money, make a living, grow it residential, grow it commercial, use the seeds, just like what I was explaining to our our, uh, our friends here that joined us today. If you want to get to know the hundreds and hundreds of people that are in the members area right now, we have a directory, a members directory. So that way you can get to know those people as well. Uh, we have people calling me all the time like, hey, do you know somebody in Ocala that grows Moringa? I can point them into your direction and let them know, yes, we do actually. Just come to the members area and I can give you access to that other member that is in Ocala. You can visit and share and get cuttings and get material from them. If you're just getting started and you need seeds, the member in Ocala could potentially sell you the seeds that you need to get started. If you're just first he hearing about Moringa for the first time, get to know all of our members in the members area in the Grow Moringa Collective. Um, I was mentioning just how we have seeds available. We've got thousands of seeds available. Uh, we also have the biostimulant seed cake, which is also available. This is a byproduct of making this, uh, the seed oil. We also have the seed oil, which is really, really good. Boom, you can grab some seed oil from us. And what we were doing here mostly today was just showing you how to make your trees a little bit more healthy in the pots here. In these peat pellet pots, what we're doing is we're just taking a little bit of the peat moss out 
and we're adding perlite to it. The perlite helps with aeration, so that way the seed doesn't become anaerobic here inside this little pot. So I've really just been adding a little bit of perlite in there, dropping a seed in, and that's gonna be really beneficial for creating a much healthier little sprout. And we're shipping these trees. They'll be sprouted here in the next week or two weeks, and we'll be sending them out in the mail. If you grab yours now, you'll be one of the first ones to grab these ones that were just potted up here today. So really appreciate everybody for joining us. One more question? One more thing. Sure. You didn't promote the cream. My mother bought the, the, oh, the, the set for you. Yes. yes. That's I right. got burned. I what? put the cream. Oh, you got sunburned? I, no, I got burned by oil. Oh, my I was goodness. frying something, got burned. Put that cream on it. You won't even know what the... the that's the awesome. Um, so you need to promote that one too. I do. We're actually getting those made again. <laughs> yes. Um, I've just been phenomenal. so busy with the seedlings and the oil. We'll get back to getting the salve and the yes. deodorant as well. So yeah. I'm glad that you love that and mentioned that. Yes, that was phenomenal. Awesome. I was in love with that. When you ship those pods that you have right there, uh -huh. um, do you have trouble shipping them? Like, nope. And how do you package them so they don't? Well, I actually have a video about that. I have several videos actually okay, well, about we'll that. Look it up then. Nice. Yeah, so easily, that's why I do it like this because once the tree sprouts, the roots kind of like hold that soil in. I'll take five of them and I wrap it in paper and then I tape it. Then I take that and I wrap that in a bigger paper, right? So that way then I just slide that in a box. Okay. Got and it. I have that on camera as well. All right, okay. thank you. Great. So I'll go ahead and end this out so we can go on a tour. We're going to go on a tour. If you guys want to come by on Saturdays, every Saturday between 10 and 2, we'd love to give you a tour and also teach you how to grow Moringa live as well. And thank you so much for joining us today. As always, I appreciate you. Peace, prosperous, growing. Ciao.